Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. I'm Richard Carlton at FMTrain.tv. I'm the creator of this wonderful location. However, it's not really about me. It's about all the other awesome people that make this show awesome. Awesome people make it awesome. There's too many awesomes in one awesome word. But I'm glad you're awesomely here on an awesome Friday because the weekend will be awesome. Okay, and uh, so we have Jacob Taylor today here and Calvin Moseyman. Okay, so here's the plan. What we're going to do is we're going to spend the first 30 minutes with Calvin talking to him because I had to bring him in for an emergency senior engineer uh, brain transplant because I seized up and couldn't remember what I was doing. And, uh, and then we're going to release Calvin. He can go play in the street. Real quick, so upcoming broadcast schedule. I'm going to press the button right here. Uh, PDF rendering is today, conversation today. And it's a little tricky. And about the time you think you've got the world figured out, it throws you for a loop. So um, I'm thinking about taking today's little um, nugget of knowledge and adding it as a side nugget into the new starting point. Uh, Calvin is uh, going to look at the calendar for us, hopefully, over the next several, three, four, five days and do a brain transplant for the latest version of the calendar into FM Starting Point, the free CRM that we updated yesterday. We updated the light version yesterday. If you're looking for the standard or enhanced versions, those are down the road a little farther. But I see anytime I learn something or I have a little nugget of code that's a little unique and I know that I'm going to forget it, I like to kind of bury it in the starting point so we can dig it out later for myself. Once again, starting point is nothing more than what I personally want. But then I realize that mostly what I want is what most of you want at some point with different levels of degrees of uh, of wantness. And so uh, I figure that if my needs are largely parallel to yours, then that makes uh, us a good conversation to have. So let's pivot forward real quick. Oh, as a reminder, if you want to support Calvin or Jacob and make sure that they keep coming back and Jacob can actually afford the burritos that he eats, please purchase one of our training bundles here. We greatly appreciate it. With this, it allows me to pay the bill and make sure both these people have burritos so they can self burrito themselves. Because you don't like FileMaker developers when they're grumpy and not well fed they make crappy code so just keep that in mind Got it. Our, our training is the burrito jar is the burrito <laughs> jar yeah that is the burrito, burrito jar. jar with that in mind what i want to do is calvin came here to help a little bit and calvin we're going to basically the conversation was about creating pdfs on filemaker server and you just went through this with a customer and i'm going to bring up the sample file but do you want to talk a, a little bit about this from your perspective i guess yeah, so sometimes there's different maybe reasons why you want a report created, a PDF report created on server versus on FileMaker Pro. Maybe it's going to run faster. Uh, it's creation can be faster. The Maybe you want to do it off hours so or have it automated with through sassing. And you just, and the server needs to run this process. But when you create a PDF, uh, what's really nice in Pro is that you can just pop the PDF up. You don't have to save it anywhere. Uh, you can see it and close it or save it. But on the server, we have to do something with it. We have to save it somewhere so we can get it later. And the way that we do that is putting it into a container field. And so when we put it, but putting it in the container field is pretty easy on FileMaker Pro. On FileMaker server, it can be a little tricky. Let's demonstrate it real quick on Pro. So yeah. this is FileMaker. So this file is a the copy of starting point from yesterday we gave everyone. So this is a one that we're kind of abusing. We've I've duplicated a printable layout, although it didn't have to be this way. It's at the bottom. Um, and so we're just going to very much run this very manually. We've talked about PSOS before, perform script on server before. We're not going to spend too much time on that. There are some people here who had questions about FileMaker uh, server, about containerization stuff from yesterday. So Jacob's here. We will be covering those to, from about 1.30 or so, 1.35 to the top of the hour. Uh, but for the first part of this, we're going to cover this PSOS conversation. So um, this, I got this to work because we had this, Calvin. So I was able to do this without any adult supervision, right? Um, and so the idea is that we're on a layout and we're going to, instead of running a print command, we're going to set up a path. And, and, and remember, we talked about this before in terms of FileMaker server. If I bring myself over here briefly, I can talk to all of you on this oops, side screen as well. The issue is that the path, if you're on a copy of Pro, Mac or Windows, you have access to a lot of different paths. Remember on FileMaker server, and that's Mac, Windows, or Linux, 
Um, and also FileMaker Go, those applications are sandbox. That's a fancy way of saying that the number of places that you can interact with the operating system has is limited for safety and security reasons. So on FileMaker Server and Go, you have access to the documents path and the temporary path. If you're on Mac or Windows Pro, you've got desktop documents, temporary application location, file location. There's about double or triple the number of paths that you can monkey with, if that makes sense, right? Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So if we if this works, which it does right here, so all this does is it sets a path, to the documents path, but it's running on this copy of FileMaker Pro on this Mac. It works the same on Windows. Um, and I hard-coded the name of the file to be test.pdf, but you could name it anything. We save a copy of it, and it saves it to the documents directory. I do a 0.5 second delay because I've done that elsewhere, and that just gives the operating system sometimes time to realize that the file has been <laughs> saved there. And the operating system is like, oh, yeah, I've got the file. Thanks for that, right? Because maybe the operating system is in the middle of a drink or it's busy. You want to give it just enough half of a breath to, to for it to be aware that it has that file. That that this could be required in your situation. It might not be required, and it might be required some days where things are really busy. So I just put it in there just to kind of give it a little bit of a a stutter step. Um, and then what we do is we I I do this in file cert twice. I do it once for the into a variable if I needed it. I don't end up using this. Then I insert. Then I run the same command to a container. So I save the PDF to a container. So I take a uh, I'm printing a PDF and then on this layout happens to be the container as well. So if I just run this real quick just to frame this, I'm going to run it locally. And it's going to do this dog and pony show and it saves the PDF right here. And you're like, okay, that worked. If I can, uh, trust me, if I export this, this is a PDF right here of this. I guess I could right click it. I could say export field contents, automatically open, say the desktop, pops it open. This is it. Okay. So then I said, and I'll run you through the discoveries here. And then I hand it to Calvin, right? So this is this is what you're going to do. You're like, hey, I'm going to have this run this on PSAW. So what you do is you take your fancy script down here. And, and I've got Zoom that's kind of in the way here. Let me move this around a bit. And so I took this script. I broke into two parts. First part is I clear the container here in case it's in there. Then I run a PSOS command to run the rest of the code. And the rest of the code is in part B. So part A is the part you run locally. Part B is the part you call on the server. Initially... I used the exact same scripts and everything, and it failed. And I'd forgotten the fact that insert, um, the insert commands, insert file, insert, like insert from devices for iOS specific, right? Go specific, insert from the camera, insert from a signature, all that stuff. That's a device specific. The insert script steps, you got to be careful to make sure they're supported on the computer. If you go to FileMaker server over here and you say, if I say insert over here, and then I come over here and I say, show me which ones of these run on FileMaker server. Huh. Most of them don't, including the one we really needed right here. And I'm like, oh! And then I said, well, then I looked up. I said, oh, yes, we can do it with insert from URL. And then I went, I don't know the exact uh, formatting of the path to make it work. And so then I called someone who was really smart. So I knew that this was the answer we wanted, but I didn't know quite enough, remember quite enough to do it. So then Calvin, here we are, here's Calvin. Yeah, so at this point, there, there's two things. And you can drive Calvin, you can drive. Yeah, so let's just walk through this. So we're making sure that we're on the right layout. So obviously with, when you perform script on server, it's going to go to the default layout for the file or whichever layout that the startup script takes you to. So you want to make sure you go to the right layout that you want. And the right record. I didn't do it here. There's only and, one record in the table, but you'd have to establish the record too. So yes. Right. In this case, like you said, one record. So we, we that's not wasn't a problem. Next, you we were setting the file path in a variable. And right here, I'm using the temporary path. And we can try this out and use the documents path. Then I'm saving the record as a PDF. Then we have our little pause in here. Then we navigate to the field, which is this field right here. And finally, we use insert from URL to that field. And we prefix the file path with files colon 
slash 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 volumes. Okay, and, and this is where you have the calculation, right? Should I bring that up? Because everyone's going to want this, I think, on the this right. Yeah. Here, right? So so this depends on what what uh, platform you are on. So here we're determining what system platform we're on, Mac or Windows, and specifying whether we want to use file volumes or just file with two slashes, and figure out where where that the the right format that we need for this. And so actually when I had done this before, I only did it on Windows. And so I hadn't tested it on Mac. And but when we did our test, it worked. So I'm going to just uh, disable this. And let's go ahead and save that. Okay. And so then there's our insert from URL. And this was just for testing. And this might be something to, interesting to look at for you. The uh, we're just putting the get last error into the notes field, and because you can't have error capture or see what the last error was when it's run on the server, let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. So, I'm going to navigate over here so we can see this. I'm going to delete this container file just so that we can see that it's getting refreshed, and I'll se select part A, which is where we call our perform script on server, and I'm going to say run. And there it inserted the PDF right here in the container field. And I hope you saw that. So one thing I'm curious to see though, is I know I say go to field, but does, is that really required? And some of these things, you just kind of have to mess around with it till you get it just right. So, oh, it still worked. Yeah. So maybe that was not required. Yeah. I, was, I was curious if that would be an issue here. Let's try one other thing. The doc, I'm going to save to the documents path instead of the temporary path. Let's see. And see if that makes a difference. And we'll go ahead and press play again. And it didn't. So either the documents path or the temporary path would work. And those are the only two you have access to on FileMaker Server and FileMaker Go. Super important. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I couldn't remember, and this is why it was resulted in a panic call to Calvin, the volumes, the th it was three slashes and the volumes. And so if you were gonna build this code to make it really cross compatible everywhere, you wanna try doing that real quick to see if we can yeah. make that work? Yeah. Yeah, so. Because we've, we've hard coded it right now to work on a Mac server, but, uh, and then this gets to the conversation about, you know, J with Jacob Taylor, right? Uh, you know, what is it if it's, it's going to do one, it's going to two, else. Actually, yours won't support uh, Linux here. Oops. Uh, that's a good point. And Jacob's I here to help thought us. thought of doing this on Linux. Yeah. What kind of Ooh, bad just work? It, it might just um, It just works. Yeah. Um, it would probably, well, so I think with your case statement, the does case, your case statement, statement fall it. through to file? File colon okay. slash slash, sorry. If your case statement falls through to file colon slash slash, I think that will work. Okay, so so case situation one is it does an item one, uh, and that's Mac. Item two is Windows, and item three is a fail condition, which is going to be the same result as Windows. So we're thinking that Windows and Linux might be the same behavior, right? Yeah. So okay. and we could test this. Um, we will do that here momentarily just for fun. Okay, so why don't we so go ahead? I'm, yeah, we switched it now so that it's will work cross platform, and we just want to double check to make sure that this works. Work still works on a Mac anyway. Okay, so it still works right. on a Mac. So, um, let me drive, and I'm going to transplant this. So, Jacob Taylor, do you want to just start walking us through the conversation about you know dependencies on the operating system, right? Especially Linux and things on creating a PDF. A little bit. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think about that. So the the most of the stuff that you'll need um, is installed by FileMaker Server. Um, like when you go and install the package on the server. Yep. Yeah. Just so. Um, and so you'll have a a set of fonts, and uh, obviously you need like PDF rendering libraries and stuff like that. If you're a Linux person, you're probably used to having to go and collect. Uh, lists of 
you know, different things that you that you might need, different packages that you need to install for your software or whatever. Um, and so FileMaker Server brings all of that with it. Um, it installs it for you. Um, it does, it's not like included in the, in the package or whatever. Um, it just drags it in from Ubuntu. Um, and then you also, but you also have um, access to the rest of the fonts that you can get on Ubuntu as well if you go install them. But that's that's basically the same conversation on um, actually Mac and Windows. Um, we I haven't had to go do things like that for clients, but uh, it's at least my understanding that you can jump in there and um, you know it's like oh I need you you get a licensed font for your business or something like that. You know you have to buy a license for it or something like that. Um, but that gives you the ability to produce uh, produce documents. You know authored that way. Um, and so if you go install that on your Mac, Windows, or Linux um, FileMaker server, then it should then be accessible to the, in this case, server side um, PDF rendering. Um, so you don't, this can be helpful also because, for example, uh, if you want to do what we what we're talking about here, which is server side rendering of PDFs, um, and maybe you don't want to go to every single FileMaker Pro in your business and install a font on their computer right for rendering say you know beautiful and perfect invoices or something like that like you have a, a brand font or something um some larger businesses have things like that and so um you would not want to go around and like put that on everybody's computer um that may have licensing implications to be perfectly honest for the font itself um and so you can put it on the server instead um and then just have everybody fire their uh i have a oh PDF this rendering. is good okay so so, so it worked on Linux. I see. I see the at, lack of thumbnail, but I see a working. Yeah, the thumb. I don't want to get into thumbnail because that has other issues that you know. I, that's not a conflict. It's a, but, it's the, a but the thing. font. Yep. But the font issue is absolutely here. We go. So yep. this is this so the Linux, the your the basically yep. your Linux server ran a print command with the limited fonts it had had access to. And um, it there's some spa lateral spacing issues. One because of font substitution, that's a big one. I mean, it doesn't look hideous, but if you're very tightly organized kind of company, you want it to look just so, you're going to have to spend a little bit of cycles to make this work. So, Margaret, do we have questions? Because this was the essential minimum. What we just covered here is the minimum nut of what I wanted to cover today in terms of of giving people value for this. Right? Yes. Uh, yes, I don't see questions so much, but people are typing. So you ask that, and now they're typing to respond. There's probably there. there's probably two different things going on there. Do you know from the layout what font that uh, this invoice layout's using? It's probably a little funky. Uh, the font would be yeah. Optima. Optima. Oh, there it's you kinda, go. Okay, all... so it's going to fall through to something else. Yeah, yeah, that's a Mac yeah. Font. That's a that's a Mac font, and that's because it was designed way back in the day. Let me see. Fonts are important. Clients, Clients yeah. in the pronunciation are very precise. Yeah, Beverly. So my experience has been that we dealt with some art galleries, and anyone like that um, reminds me of that movie, that Problemista. Once again, we're going to bring that back. I went and watched that movie, and it was about uh, crazy art people, mostly. And uh, FileMaker, and can you FileMaker? It's a verb, apparently. I was unaware it's a verb. It is a verb. Can, so, you, yeah. can you Google? You can now FileMaker, yes. FileMaker has this undercurrent of, you know, it's a, it's almost like an established skill set that the art people have to have, and it's kind of funny, right? And the and the one kid's like wants an internship or whatever, so he says, yeah, I can FileMaker, and of course he has no idea what he's doing. So Calvin, what do you think? Any questions for Calvin before we kick him loose? Calvin has to go work on his customer project work. Right, everyone, yes. Any qu questions for Calvin before we kick him loose? Nope, just comments that clients in the printed, printing industry are very precise, so fonts are indeed very important from Beverly. Yes. Other questions on this? I mean, so, there, so yesterday we had so, uh, some questions about FileMaker server and containerization, and who was that? It was a person who was new yesterday. Are they here? <sighs> uh, they were named Nobundo, I think. Um, Roberto Lodella, yeah. Nope, there Somebody you go, thank you. Yes, uh, and the comment was basically about do you do you do you recommend containerization and there I actually saved the question in Discord. Hold on, we're gonna mm -hmm. scroll up and find yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm staring at it right now. 
So are you staring at it? Okay. Did you want to ask the question? I, and then I brought it, it up because I looked at Discord like after stream yesterday and was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, there was, was a good, right. there was a good question for me. It was Got a good it. question. So do you want to, mm -hmm. you want to switch to ask the question? Sure, I'll read it. So, uh, sorry, it's the 24 hour delay on the answer here. <laughs> uh, hi from Mexico is, uh, with FM server 23, 20.3.2, that's the latest version, um, compatible with Ubuntu 2004 and 22, they said point XX, it would be also be 2204. Um, and, and then a second question, or maybe a third, uh, have you ever containerized FileMaker server on Linux? And finally, where to find such a Dockerized uh, solution? Um, so I think, Actually, yeah, that's a that's the page I would go to for which of the Linuxes it supports. And let's see, you want to go to the server area. There it is. Yep. So yeah, twenty oh four and twenty two oh four. Now I thought they were dropping. So they had so with twenty. So FileMaker Server twenty dot three dot two twenty oh four is still supported because it's going away. I know that some that I've seen that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Either it's about to go away or it just went away or something. Do you mean support wise from Claris? Yes, for installing Probably. it on that. Okay. Yeah. 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 That makes That's, sense. Sorry, I was just. <laughs> I was it like, might. The, it might the, be other, on... the other side of that conversation, not related to FileMaker, really, uh, is that Ubuntu just randomly, like, if you sign up for their little free pro thing, or it's free if you only have like five servers or something, um, they'll give you an. They're like, you get five extra years of support, so we're up to ten years. So twenty oh four. Ubuntu, that's the old support one there, will be supported. It expires in like 2030 now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it solved the, the the old problem like Claris had originally picked the Linux stuff to run on CentOS, which is, I have no objection to that choice. Uh, it's a very long-term support operating system. That was the kind of the, probably the point of that selection. Um, and, they, and then whatever, I'll just hand wave and say licensing issues and some changes with that Linux project um, happened. And uh, so that is not like true anymore. Um, and so Claris went, all right, Ubuntu, which, yep, I, I would agree that's the next best thing, basically. Um, and and then after that choice was made by Claris, we now have like 10 year support timelines for some of this stuff. So I don't I don't know what Claris is going to do with that. We'll, we'll hear probably about the time they release it. But um, yeah. yeah, at least currently, for the time being, 2004 and 2204 are both supported. And for 20 point, you know, 20 point whatever FileMaker um, version 20, I think that's all the versions are the same support um, timelines. Okay. Also, both support AMD 64 and ARM 64, which then it AMD must be on their AMD next release. It must be on the next release with with we, with fi, what Claris is calling FileMaker 2124. 2124. 20, 20, yeah. yeah, I would expect them to drop support on that. It's not that it won't work. They just don't want to do go through the QA testing on it. So yeah. Um. Anyway. Yep. And I, I think that's probably good to honestly, it's a good thing to save resources on because in in general, unless it's going to cause them a bunch of heartache and you know, tearing their hair out, trying to get stuff working or whatever, um, not having to run it across two, three, four different Linuxes, which are all very different. Um, that may or may not be obvious to members of the public who maybe don't use Linux every day or something like that. But even even just those two, the two year difference between the 2004 and the 2204 Ubuntu, um, I would actually say there's a lot of improvements, to be honest. I was pretty happy with that. Um, we had somebody asking uh, in a private forum um, about, because uh, there's, of course, 2004, 20, 2204, you might be able to guess there's a 2404, and the right. end year is that. Hey, we're in April. Um, so uh, it's not out yet. They release at the end of the month, not the beginning of the month, but someone had to ask, hey, Claris, are you guys going to do 2404? And I, there's no answer to that question yet, so I have nothing to say. Um, but I would find it unlikely because it's another one of these huge step change um, differences for Ubuntu, and it will probably require a bunch of work from Claris when they get there. So, well, at we'll least see, a bunch but... of QA testing. And so, and I can tell you that uh, pending any large scale problems, testing is complete for 2124. So, so yeah. testing is complete for that product. Um, and Beverly, you should know about this if you don't, but yeah, they're they yeah. basically, I, it's, I wouldn't it's, expect them to change. 
it's baked point. and it's done and now they're just trying to figure out one and how and when to fire it out the door you know the torpedoes yeah. in the tube how do you pickle as they say if you're in the navy how do you pickle the fish off right how, when and where and uh so that's kind of the next question but it's built it's loaded it's tested it's you know load the yeah. torpedo in the tube open outer doors prepare to fire right kind of thing and so if you're a navy person you understand what i'm saying so anyway uh, 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 uh. so uh once again as a reminder if you see re minimum recommendations in here the, the minimum here is probably if you give this to your boss and you have an uh, elaborate FileMaker solution, this might result in you being yelled at potentially, I would say, uh, because, will. yeah, will, because it's, will, will. That's, four that's, gigabytes of RAM, will, oh, you gotta be <laughs> kidding. Please you will stop. be yelled at, <laughs> yeah, it'll be terrible, yeah, don't do that, don't do that. Um, in fact, a, I consider, I won't buy, and this has been this way for four years, five, six years, actually quite a long time. I won't buy a machine with less than 16 gigs of memory, uh, period. And anymore, I'm trying to buy them with 24 or more, um, just period. So FileMaker server, uh, Claris, once again, insists that a Mac mini is not a server yet on their technical specifications. The word server and Mac mini appear very closely together. Okay. Um, and uh, I use a M1 chip uh, with 16 gigs of memory on it. And it rip, that's that one DBW2 that I use personally. And it rips right along, but I don't have a bunch of people using it. It's my own personal machine. I think it would probably serve 10 or 15 pride people pretty easily. Depends on what they're doing, right? How, how hairy it gets. But that's a pretty, the M1s are pretty powerful boxes. They really are, so. Yeah, they have a lot of horsepower. Um... I've been pretty pleased, actually, with the new Apple Silicon. They're they're quite performant. All right. So, uh, Lucky Dog. So, Ghost Robot goes by various call signs. His other call sign is Lucky Dog. So, we just have Lucky Ghost Dog. And uh, uh, 64 gigs. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, I've been buying the Mac Studio. By the way, is a, is a hot tip. The, at the And I'm not sure what happened, but... There's a glut, has been a glut of the Mac Studios. It's the first generation Mac Studios with the with the 512 gigs on the solid state drive, which is plenty for most things. And because then I plug in other drives externally to it, which are fast through USB C. But 32 gigs of RAM with an M1 Max processor. In fact, I got one for Jacob. I have two, so I think I own three total. Um, whole no, I own four total. Four total. And those are very fast machines and they're they were manufactured 2022 so they're gonna have good support for quite a while yet their pricing is basically a thousand bucks and if you juice up a mac mini you're gonna pay that much anyway and so you're like oh i could have an m2 processor with 24 gigs of ram or i can have an m1 max with 32 gigs of ram and i would take the 32 gigs of RAM with the faster bus speed and everything. That Mac Studio is a much better machine for that, for the same price. So um, anyway, so just as a side note, there's a glut of those online, a ton of them. So it's it's what I was, what the person was asking for and what I was referencing previously. Uh, Claris Engineering shipped a Docker kind of spin up script with um, what FileMaker server, I think, at least for Mac and Linux, maybe. I forget which platforms it's on, um, but it basically will let you take an existing FileMaker server and boomf, and like make a little cloud on your computer, basically. Like if you need to test like multiple web direct workers or something like that, um, it can spin it up in a little running on your machine. Um, great for development, basically. So What is this again? It's a simulator for multiple worker machines on one computer? Oh, it's not a simulator. It does it for real. You can, really? But on yeah. one computer, right? On one computer, yeah. Yep. That's the upside of the containers. Um, I've, I've said before, I, I have a personal, I don't like them, but that's not business advice. I'm not giving business advice. Um, but uh, that is one of the things that they let you do, basically, is because you can take random applications and like run 75 of them on your computer. Um, and they're in their own little environment. Um, it doesn't mean they'll run well. It just means that nope. you ran them. Right. Nope. So, it's it's nice. for te yeah, it's for testing. So if you're like a developer and you need to do, uh, you know, smoke testing, uh, you've made some changes to your app, you want to do some stuff, you've got maybe even you've built some user testing scripts, 
for example, uh, we have that record generator that uh, pretends mm. to act like people while it's working and stuff like that, right? You could do something like that um, as a final test for your application of performance. God, I gotta uh, go back do exactly and find that, that thing, but you know, you, some kind of testing would. framework like that that you could build. So yeah, no, we wrote a script that simulated people typing and doing stuff, and it you know would randomly generate the text, but it was a copy it was a script that ran on pro but it would slow it would be slow and it would type and kind of plot along like a human would do yep and then you'd run you'd go that into against, different records and yeah make a, make a contact and be like oh we have and two accounts and do this kinda, and, yeah and then cool. you start loading those up and then you run it against the filemaker server to see what happens with the filemaker server and you have five or ten of them it's one thing but you know a lot of times we people say well you have 20 users but are 20 users all beating on it at one time. What does 20 users mean? Is it all simultaneous? Because if you have 20 people and they're using FileMaker as part of their business process, three of them of the 20 or four of the 20 might be in the bathroom, one or two having dinner, one of which is playing Tetris or some <laughs> Minesweeper on their computer, whatever the latest game is, uh, right? League of Legends or something, right? So the actual number, if people say there's 20 people using it, does that really mean 20 or does that just mean 20 people that use it during the day, right? So that's where you do real testing with real 20 pro machines that are actually running a, kind of a humanish kind of script to see what happens and you get a good idea of performance. So anyway. All right. Anyone else questions? Because it's kind of an interesting day, kind of a lightweight day, but it's uh, we're going to take that code that J that that uh, Calvin had. We're going to make sure it becomes a nugget in there, at least in the script somewhere. We can kick out a PDF, PDF locally on the local computer, right, and then back in the camera and then do it on the server. And then having it work on Linux, was, that was an upgrade for Calvin. He didn't have the Linux support. Uh, Jacob, so that was nice. So we already made it better today. <laughs> oh, by the way, I was laughing about Claris over here. This is so funny, right? Uh, WebDirect on mobile computers, right? Well, if you have an iPad with this <laughs> on it, okay? I'm like, uh, what was the last time that Apple almost anywhere posted the CPU gigahertz on your iPhone or iPad? And then in a hexacore... Don't they normally say it's like an M16 chip or a something chip or an M10 chip or yeah. an M8 chip? That's this a is funny this, way to list that. Yeah, I know. This so is this very not. This probably be like a generation or newer, you know, like. Yeah. Because fundamentally that, uh, oh, I guess technically because it's web direct. I was just going to say, because the, the real actual consideration there for any of the iOS devices is the is go it's, it's, it's go <laughs> and, it's the operating system and, it's the operating yeah system. and go is uh, yeah and go is what version of ios runs on that let me go back here and device. find That's go it. let me find go. Um, go where's go give me some if you're go. on an if, yeah i I've just politely if you're on an iphone you should use go, go. instead actually there's probably a couple scenarios where that won't work i can imagine some hilarious network shenanigans you could do but um actually that might be addressed by the what they here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here's go. iOS, uh, iPad OS 16, 16 or 17. 17. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's the answer to that. So, the other one down here is weird because that's a web direct reference, but still, it's such a in the weeds kind of, you know, description of that. So, yeah, this is a pretty mm -hmm. good document to have under your, uh, a quick link to on your computer so you can find this stuff and, Check it out and know what's going on. Very good stuff. And then, oh, here it is, T. And then here's a cloud. Oh, cloud essentials, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah, FileMaker Cloud. Hi. So we all are uh, N8N. Uh, Ghost Dog Custom Connectors. N8N. Yeah. So they're, they're asking about the the connect, the, the connect JavaScript, what, IDL dropout or whatever Claris gave us. I don't, we haven't touched it. There's theoretically the way to build an entire custom connector to to specify like the the, the third party API and its shape and structure to connect to add. Oh, you mean the Claris co uh, custom connector and Claris Connect? Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. So the, my understanding is right now is if you build a custom connector, you can't share it with anyone. And the whole point is if you build like your own connector, then you want to share it or sell it or somehow distribute it, and you can't. And because you can't, then why would anyone do it, right? We're back to that. Yeah. I, I haven't had that conversation with the team at Claris yet. I'm looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, like Bever Beverly's correct. She had a comment, which is that you can copy and paste the JSON. Um, 
that's there's nothing obviously like there's no store or official redistribution mechanism or something like that but if you build a custom connector you can you can grab the whole thing with a single json i don't want to say payload but block of json text can you does that it all fits in one or is it like multiple blocks and different because like if you go to filemaker and you're like oh i'm going to copy filemaker mm -hmm. Notwithstanding the new XML two, you have to copy the scripts here. You got to copy the field definition. Uh, it's it's a JSON blob that like describes what the a API single, is. A single yes. one. Okay. Yep. That's, you paste it in a well, box. You can teach Connect how to talk to stuff. Basically, that's how I'd that's how I'd describe it. So and one so, block of text format in JSON. Okay. Cool. The the main uh downside i guess which uh what beverly pointed out essentially um is so if the ap if the remote api changes you uh the filemaker engineer or, or whatever if you're a json engineer i suppose um then have to go update it in your customer connect system and if yeah you, and because there's no sharing and that would actually probably be a different kind of sharing than most people are asking for to be honest um but like having a connector that like rcc builds a connector for i don't even know what a good example is but something that's not in connect currently um yeah. and then like we could register that in our account and then when we bring that to our customer connect accounts i'm sure that's not correct verbiage um you know we can update it basically you put it put yourself in the position where you're able we to could push an update in yeah, one place yeah, yeah 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 so something like that will probably be important by the time we really get into it um because that'll I make don't... sharing yeah. or or you know the the build out work that's going to be necessary because it's like it's putting it all on us and that's fine but then like we need tools to be able to manage it also um if you, if, you know uh, it's not whatever the various connectors are not going to make it through Apple legal. That's that's perfectly fine. It makes sense. But yeah, I get all that with Apple. That's fine. I am going to cut everyone loose early today if we don't have anything else. Margaret, are you there? Jacob. So Jacob, short day. I'm here. Yep. You answered all the questions, all the server people. All right, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a good Friday. Good Friday. And then the uh, eclipse will be is is uh, Monday, right? Monday at 10 o'clock. Yes thereabouts pacific time for mm -hmm. me or different time for all of you okay cool all right good one see you later alligator